It's a wedding planning podcast road trip. Today, we're taking a shopping trip together to buy supplies for a really fun and really easy wedding project that you can share with your guests. Then we're going to head back to my house and I'm going to walk you through step by step. I'll give you a hint. We're going to be playing with chocolate. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey friends, it's Cara, and I believe that every engaged couple should enjoy the expertise of a down-to-earth, honest, and professional wedding planner. Join me each week for straightforward wedding planning advice designed to streamline and simplify your wedding plans. To learn more about how I can help take the expense and overwhelm out of your wedding planning, visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash vault. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there, friend, and thank you so much, as always, for being here with me today. This show is literally a treat. I had so much fun putting it together, and I can't wait to share with you the project that we're going to create today. Before we get started, I'm going to lay out a quick roadmap of where we're headed. This project is inspired by a few things. First off, my husband's obsession. He is obsessed with pretzels. Don't even ask. (laughs) If you listen to our show on ways to plan your wedding with your fiance and kind of doing that as a team that aired a few weeks back, you know all about his love of pretzels. Number two, it's inspired by my love of chocolate. So we have a perfect marriage there. And then of course, number three, it's inspired by my ongoing passion to share with you some really creative, unique, and affordable ways that you can make your wedding day absolutely gorgeous. So all of that said, to bring it full circle, today I'm going to walk you through step-by-step how to make beautiful hand-dipped chocolate pretzels. For a really detailed blog post, shopping list, step-by-step instructions, and a ton of videos, you can visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash pretzel. First off today, we're going to go shopping together for all the supplies that you'll need to make these beauties. And then we're going to head back to my house, to my kitchen for a step-by-step on how to make this easy, beautiful, and delicious project come to life. And let me say from years of experience, it's extremely rare to say all of those three things about a wedding DIY project. I know that a lot of us have a very love-hate relationship with DIY projects, do-it-yourself things, myself included. I love the idea of being creative. I love the idea of saving money. But when you get down into the nitty-gritty of it, it doesn't always turn out the way you imagined. Sometimes projects can become a lot more expensive than you thought they would be at the beginning. They can be a lot more difficult, a lot more time consuming. If you've ever tackled a DIY project and you're wondering if this is really the route you want to go, rest assured I have worked out all the kinks and I'm going to share with you all the hiccups that I experienced along the way so that you can go into this project knowing that it will turn out perfectly from start to finish. At the end of our time together today, you're going to have professional quality, beautiful, edible wedding favors to share with your guests. And this is all for less than 50 cents per piece. 50 cents per end product. That is absolutely amazing. You would pay at least $3 a piece to buy these from any vendor out there. So that is an amazing deal. And I'll also mention really quickly that these beautiful treats not only make perfect wedding favors, they're also a great addition to any dessert bar and they would also make perfect party gifts. For your bridal shower, your bachelorette party, your bridesmaids gift boxes. So this is a really versatile project that you can use in a lot of different ways. And with that, let's dive into part one of our journey and let's go shopping. We're here at the craft store and whatever I'm going to name drop, we're at Michael's. Most craft stores will have a baking section where they have like cake decorating supplies 
things like that. So head to the one closest to you and check out the selection. You're gonna wanna head to the cake decorating and the baking aisle. And a quick note here too, especially on Michael's, I don't know if you're big on shopping there, but you must, simply must download their app because they have some really incredible coupons that you will not want to miss out on. A really common one is 40% off any regular price item, but they also run 20% off your entire purchase, 25% off your entire purchase. Lots of really, really good deals on that app. So wherever you're shopping, check out, see if they have an app or see if they have any coupons that you can take advantage of. Okay, so here I am in the cake decorating aisle and here's a rundown of what we're shopping for here we need chocolate to melt and depending on how you want to complete your pretzel sticks I'm gonna get two, at least two contrasting colors you could do more than two contrasting colors whatever your preference is there but this is a really really fun way to work in your wedding colors and make this a really super custom project so let me come down here to the candy melts is what they're called candy melts and these are so pretty they have pretty much every color of the rainbow any color you could imagine i'm gonna pick up white and pink and side note if you're listening to this in real time run to michael's because these are actually on sale two for five dollars two bags for five dollars so i'll start i'll i'll keep it simple i'm going to do white and pink and i'm going to note here you do not need to use this candy melts chocolate specifically you could also use normal baking chocolate which is probably going to be a little cheaper in larger quantities at the normal grocery store so head to the baking aisle of the grocery store if you want to just get normal baking chocolate you're pretty much going to be limited to white or chocolate brown chocolate so white chocolate or brown chocolate if that's fine with your colors again you can probably get a little bit better deal on just normal melting baking chocolate at the regular grocery store but for all these fun colors I think it's totally worth it to pay a little bit more okay another thing that we are gonna look for here in the cake baking and decorating aisle are some really cute sprinkles or shimmer beads pearl beads gold dust anything along those lines that we can decorate these pretzel sticks with. So I am seeing some really cute white shimmer beads. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a jar of those. Ooh, and they also have purple shimmer beads, which are really, really cute. Okay, I think those will be a really nice compliment on these pretzel sticks. So I'm gonna pick up those. There are so many other options. There's every single color of just normal sprinkles that you could possibly imagine. You know what, I'm gonna get some pink sprinkles too. So mix and match, make it really, really custom. Some other options that I'm seeing in the decorating area are pearl dust, so edible pearl dust that you could sprinkle over them. That would be really, really, really pretty. There are also edible sparkles pearl dust, color dust, cake sparkles. I mean, really anything you can imagine. How fun. Edible accents. These are little tiny hearts. Those are absolutely adorable. Okay, and the last thing I want to grab while I'm here at the craft store on my list are some clear plastic bags. Now, I lucked out because they actually happen to have pretzel bags <laughs> at Michael's which to be very honest with you was a total surprise I didn't expect them to have dedicated pretzel bags these are a package of 75 bags they measure 2 by 2 5 I'm sorry 2.25 inches wide and they're 9.75 inches long so that's going to be the perfect size for our long pretzel sticks and then you can tie the bottoms of these off just with a little ribbon or 
a little tie of any sort. You don't need to buy any special kinds of fasteners for the actual bags themselves. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and yourself? Great, thank you. Fine, you're looking for I did, yes, thank you. Would you like a bag? Yeah, please. Okay, now I'm going to head over to the grocery store where I'm going to pick up long pretzel sticks, cooking spray to prevent sticking, and some foil to lay everything out to dry on. I'll meet you back at my place in just a few minutes. Coming up after a quick break, we're going to head back to my kitchen where I'm going to walk you through from start to finish exactly how to make these beautiful chocolate dipped pretzels. Stay tuned for so much more. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at The Big Fake Wedding. The Big Fake Wedding is the ultimate wedding experience. Appearing in 30 cities across the country, you can be a guest at a perfectly planned fake wedding. You'll see wedding vendors in action, meet them in person, and experience all the fun of being a guest at an unforgettable wedding. Long gone are the days of traditional expos and bridal shows. You are looking for an unforgettable, fun experience, and the Big Fake Wedding provides just that, all while taking the stress out of planning your special day. Of course, planning your wedding is really important, but our friends at the Big Fake Wedding also believe in planning your marriage. This event is meant to be an emotional reminder of that as you watch a real-life couple renew their wedding vows, all while meeting the highest quality local vendors and enjoying drinks, food, and dancing. The Big Fake Wedding team loves their local vendors and truly believe in helping to grow their passion and business, so you experience the best of the best with a small and intimate vendor team. And not to mention all the great wedding swag and exclusive discounts that you'll get. There are still 15 Big Fake Weddings left in 2019, everywhere from Detroit to Dallas, Atlanta, Austin, and more. Grab tickets while they last by visiting TheBigFakeWedding.com. And don't forget to use the code WEDDING to get $10 off. That website again is TheBigFakeWedding.com and save $10 with promo code WEDDING. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Generation Tux. There are two big problems with suit and tuxedo rental for your wedding day. Number one, guys are kind of lazy and getting him motivated to spend your weekend stuck in a formal wear store crawling with annoying salespeople yeah, good luck with that. The second problem is that you've got to carve out the time to actually pick the suits up the day before the wedding. And that's not to mention you've got to pray that everything actually fits. With everything else going on, do you really need all that added stress and pressure just hours before the wedding? Well, breathe a sigh of relief because Generation Tux solves all of it. Here's how it works. Grab your guy, throw on your favorite Netflix series, and visit GenerationTux.com where you can build your look online right from the comfort of your couch. You can have free swatches delivered straight to your door, and they even have a free home try-on for the groom and a free groom's rental offer with five paid party members. The best part? Everything arrives on the doorstep of all your party members 14 days before the wedding. Whew. This way, if there are any fit issues at all, you've got plenty of time to take care of it. After the wedding, you'll throw everything back in the box and use the prepaid label to drop off at UPS. You'll enjoy free round trip shipping, free swatches to see in person, free home try on, and a free rental for the groom with five paid party members. So let them be lazy. Save the time, save some money, and most importantly, save your sanity by checking these guys out at www.generationtux.com slash wed planning and use promo code wed planning for 10% off the entire groom's party. Generationtux.com with promo code wed planning. Is there something that's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? 
BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. You can connect with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. This service is so convenient and I absolutely love it. There are professional counselors that specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, family conflicts. These are things that can strike anyone at any time, but I know that especially when you're in the thick of planning your wedding, tensions can run high and sometimes some professional help is just what you need. With BetterHelp, you can get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist. BetterHelp is secure, it's convenient, and it's professional. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Wedding Planning Podcast listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code WEDDING. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash wedding. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash wedding. Back to the show. Okay, we're back here at home and I am going to get myself to the kitchen and unpack all of our goodies. Okay, got my pretzel sticks. I've got my bags that we're going to wrap the pretzel sticks in after we make them. Of course, I have all of my chocolate and I have my sprinkles. Let me mention really, really quickly for a complete shopping list recap of everything that goes into this project. You can visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash pretzel. Yes, that's a funny URL, weddingplanningpodcast.co slash pretzel. And I'll even include links to buy all of these ingredients and materials online if you're an online shopper. And when you go to that website, you can also see photos of this completed project and also of the step-by-step that I'm going to walk you through now with a written recap from start to finish of how to complete this project from A to Z. So the first thing I'm going to do, get organized here, I kind of feel like I'm on Food Network, which is really fun because I really love watching cooking shows. All right. So the first thing I'm doing is laying out some sheets of foil. And this is where we'll put everything at the end when we're done. And I'm also going to spray that foil with cooking spray. Um, This is just canola oil cooking spray. You can buy it at the grocery store or Target or wherever you're shopping. So we're going to put a light coating of that down so that our pretzel sticks don't get stuck to the foil when we're trying to take them off after they've dried out. And then the next thing I'm going to do is get this chocolate melting. Now let me say here, really important tip when you're melting any kind of chocolate on the stove top. It is so important that you go low and slow. So very, very low heat and it's going to take a while. I'm actually going to start a timer so I can tell you exactly what to expect here. Let's see. Okay, so low and slow. Do not try to crank the heat up on this and get impatient and try to make it go faster because I promise you it will not work. It will backfire. Chocolate is super sensitive when you're melting it and it seizes up and gets burned really, really easily. So very important to use a super low temperature when you're melting it. My mom melts chocolate in the microwave a lot. So that's an option as well if you want to go that route, but the same principle applies. You have got to go very low power and just for like 30 seconds at a time and continuously take it out and stir it nonstop or else again it will get singed and really, really yucky. Okay, so I'm going to continue stirring this up 
and I'll let you know how long it takes. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with some findings from our chocolate melting experiment. So this took about 15 minutes for the chocolate to completely melt. And then something that I discovered along the way, which was a little bit unexpected, and that's why I like to do these projects in real time with you so that I can kind of troubleshoot and report back before you get deep into it. So the thing that I was experiencing was that the chocolate wasn't quite as thin as I would like it, um, even after it had fully melted. So what I did is I added some vegetable oil to the mix and I put in probably two tablespoons or less for three packages of the candy melt. I would recommend just adding a little drop and stirring it and kind of go like that until you get the consistency that you're looking for. I want it pretty thin, not so thin that it's just running off the pretzel, but it's thin enough so that it doesn't get super ridgy and lumpy, if that makes sense. <laughs> And I'm just going to dip a couple of these. Um, I'm holding the pretzel on one end and then I'm using a spoon and kind of helping that chocolate up onto the pretzel, leaving about an inch, two inches maybe at the bottom where you're holding it. And that's where we're going to tie off the party, the little cellophane favor bags that we bought for them. Okay, you guys, so I've got my rhythm down here and I found a much easier way to get the pretzel evenly coated with chocolate. I'm going to try to describe it here, but I'm also going to put up a video on weddingplanningpodcast.co slash pretzel because it's going to be a little bit hard to explain without a visual. But basically what I'm doing is I have a huge spoon and I'm getting a big blob of the chocolate up on the spoon and then I'm running the pretzel through that blob and kind of twisting it along the way. And that gives a perfect little twisty pattern. I feel like I've really just discovered a secret. <laughs> that is so much easier than trying to dip the actual pretzel stick down into the pot. So again, I know really hard to explain without a visual. So make sure to head over and check out that video for a visual on exactly what I'm talking about here. And then another thing I wanted to mention, don't be consumed or worried with these looking absolutely professional and perfect. That's kind of the nature of a homemade project like this. And I think that's also part of the charm. So don't get hung up if they look a little lumpy or they look a little bumpy or they're not all perfectly even or perfectly the same. That's totally fine. Okay, so I've dipped and set a few of those down. What you're going to want to do every, I don't know, I'd say four or five pretzel sticks is if you're using little sprinkles on them, you got to get those on before the pretzel, before the chocolate dries. So as you lay these down on the foil, again, I'd say every four or five pretzels, take a pause, take a break and get your sprinkles down on there so that they can get stuck before that chocolate is dried off. And then after you sprinkle them, take your fingertip and just kind of lightly press those sprinkles down just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And that'll help them all from just sliding off. It'll make them a little more stuck down. This is a perfect wedding project to do with your girlfriends, with your mom, your aunts, your cousins, anyone in your wedding party. It is such a fun and easy way to kind of get together and bond while you're also doing something productive. And it's not just a wedding favor. These are also gorgeous for your bachelorette party, for a bridal shower, I'm actually going to use these test ones that I'm making this coming weekend at my daughter's birthday party. So this is a really versatile project that you can use for a lot of different special events. Another really cute variation on this project is instead of using pretzel sticks, you could use the big large size pretzel twists. 
I saw something on Pinterest just the other day as I was kind of researching this project and it was a pretzel in a favor bag and it said we just tied the knot super cute love it so that's a good option too to replace these sticks with actual pretzel twists and last thing while we're here in the kitchen that I wanted to mention I bought a second color of chocolate to kind of drizzle a contrasting color over the pretzels if you are planning on doing that well pause let me back up a step in my honest opinion it's easier just to use sprinkles it's going to eliminate a whole step however if you would like to do a contrasting color drizzle over the pretzels all you're going to do is melt that contrasting color you might want to add vegetable oil again our findings from earlier it kind of thins it out a little bit which is going to be really really necessary for the drizzle effect and then what you're going to do is you're going to put that melted color into some kind of piping bag so this could be found at Michael's again in the cake decorating aisle you're going to look for a frosting piping bag and you want a super thin little nozzle for the frosting to come out of and then that'll create a little drizzle that you can do over your first color. So for today's example and in the pictures you're going to see I'm using white frosting to dip the sticks in and then my contrasting color is pink. And last thing to note if you do want to do that contrasting drizzle you're going to want to wait until the first layer of chocolate so your first dip wait until that is completely dry before you drizzle on the second color otherwise they're just going to kind of melt into each other and it's not going to be as much of a clean effect as if you wait for the first layer to totally dry out before you do that okay and with that said let's head back to the studio for some of my other notes on this project and also a few other really creative really fun really affordable and really easy favor ideas okay i'm back in my studio and i thought i would round out today's show with a few notes and findings that i did not realize going into this project but i found out while i was doing it this episode was so much fun for me because like I mentioned at the beginning, I know that there can be a deep love-hate relationship with DIY projects. And for me, the hate part is that I don't always know exactly how long it's going to take or how difficult it's going to be or how much money it's going to cost. So there are often these surprises that crop up in the middle of it. So I wanted to take this project for a test run and get all the kinks worked out for you. Here are some of the things I wanted to highlight that I know now at the end that I did not know at the beginning when I was shopping. My first recommendation, if we go way back to the craft store when we were in the shopping aisle picking out chocolate, I would personally, if I did this project again, I would recommend just choosing one color to dip your pretzel in and then choosing sprinkles or adornments to go on top of that one color. The process of melting a second color and drizzling it over the pretzel sticks did not go exactly how I had planned. And for the way they turned out, honestly, I thought the solid white color pretzel sticks with sprinkles came out much better looking than those ones with the drizzle on top in the contrasting color. So we can still play with color. You can still make these really, really custom. You're just going to play with the color using sprinkles or dust or any other edible decorations that you find there in that decorating aisle. And I named a ton of really pretty options back during our shopping trip. And I'll link those up on the recap that you can find at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash pretzel. Another thing I want to highlight is having to do with actually dipping the pretzel stick and getting the chocolate on it. 
I have a video that I'm going to put up on that same website that walks you through that method that I highlighted at the end, where I basically just clumped up a big old glob of chocolate on the spoon. It looked very unprofessional and very unpolished, but it gave a beautiful and really, really smooth look to the pretzel stick if you roll it in the chocolate like that. So I would not recommend trying to get your pot, like scoot all the chocolate over to the side so that it's deep enough so that you can get the whole pretzel down in there. I would really, really recommend doing that method where you roll the pretzel stick through a big old glob on a spoon. I know, super unprofessional sounding, but it gave the greatest results. Number three, I mentioned at the beginning and at the end of this episode, each piece cost 50 cents. For the batch that I did, just so you have a really solid idea and you don't need to do any guesswork, I used three packages of the chocolate and those were $2.50 each at Michael's. I used one jar of sprinkles. I bought two bags of pretzel rods, and I'll put a picture of those on the recap page. And then I also bought a package of cellophane wrappers to put them in at the end. The total cost for this project was about $25, and that made 52 pretzel sticks exactly. Overall, I am in love with this project. The technique is really easy, it's super affordable, and it's also really transferable to other things besides pretzels. So you could dip cherries, strawberries, cookies, cake pops, any other treat you love, Rice Krispie treats would be a good one, using these same basic ingredients and the same basic step-by-step. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I had a ton of fun doing this show for you, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Please feel free to share this episode and this project with your family and friends. I would love to see pictures if you tackle the chocolate dip pretzel project, and you can always find me at Wedding Planning Podcast on Instagram. All one word, super easy. So tag Wedding Planning Podcast in your photos or shoot me a DM. I can't wait to see the photos of your project and I can't wait to hang out with you again next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For details on any links and resources mentioned in today's show, be sure to take a peek at the show notes on your mobile device. You can also head over to weddingplanningpodcast.co for a complete library of past episodes and to sign up for weekly show notes and resources delivered straight to you via email. Until next time, have a great day, happy planning, and I can't wait to chat again soon. Cheers. Cheers.